history of the world, all in six glasses. Mysteries to be unfurled in liquids, not gases. Beer, wine, and spirits, then coffee, tea, and coke. It's an incredible thing what these drinks can invoke. Yeah, we got a Stone Age brew in the Fertile Crescent. Early settling people, they found that grains was present. And if you made them into gruel, left them sitting around, they'd ferment. You'd get a drink that was profound. As it developed, became a social drink. You couldn't poison me if you was drinking the same thing. Intoxication was a gift from the gods. Beginnings of civilization, we stopped traveling in squads. Settled down, built towns and cities. Everyone was drinking beer. In Egypt and Mesopotamia, it was a grain that steered us to build pyramids and temples. Drunkards Macore represent. Bread of solid beer. Beer is liquid bread. We got grain money. Grain money here. here, here. In the fertile crescent. Quickly, bring me a beaker of wine so I may wet my mind and say something clever. In the Sagros Mountains, they drank wine before it was cool. It was fermented grapes, wasn't made out of gruel. And from here, the drink spread all across the Mediterranean. You could drink it with your bread, even if you were a Syrian. My man, a Sherna Serpil, and his son Salamanese made wine trade more fashionable along the Euphrates. One represented sophistication in the civilization of ancient Greece, fueling adversarial discussion with philosophers like Socrates. So come join the symposium, mix your wine with water, me boy. Don't drink it straight from the amphora like the savage barbaro. Romans stole it all from the Greeks, including the culture of wine. The empire spread it even further just to do it for the vine. As the Roman Empire crumbled, the Dark Ages began to reign. Wine was kept alive by my man Charlemagne. Make it rain. Arab innovation was a distillation of wine. My man Jabir Ibn Hayyan, one of the first chemists of our time. First they called it Aqua Ardens. It lit up Charles the Bad. Then it was used as medicine. They thought it was pretty rad. They called it Aqua Vitae. It was quite a success. My Brahman is Guten Bay. Spread it with the printing press. After brandy wine kick started, the transatlantic trade. Rum was a byproduct of the sugar that it made. Rum bought you slaves from the African coast. And slaves made you sugar on the island of Barbados. Sugar made more rum, also known as Kill Devil, an evil trade that was run on a global level. In the American colonies, rum was made from molasses, but they bought it from the French, so the British imposed tax. Although it's said to be tea that sparked the revolution, it was actually rum that was the main attribution for deciding that the country should be independently run. And when the British were coming, Paul Revere drank rum. We got the history of the world, all in six glasses. Mysteries to be unfurled in liquids, not gas. Got my man Tommy Stan, some call him Tom Standard, and he's got a plan, he knows how to manage the history of the world in these glasses six. Don't be amazed what these tricks can depict. One day in Ethiopia, a gang of haggard goats ate some coffee from a tree, thought it was swag and dope. Omar also discovered it when he was kicked out of Mocha, and the Arabians loved the beans of which he spoke. Muhammad al-Dabani brewed it into a drink, it spread through the Middle East in no more than a blink. At first the Christians didn't trust it, thought it was the hell juice from Satan, but then Pope Clement number 8 was like, yeah, it's, it's totally fine, I just tried it, like, wow, it's, it's not, not bad. By the 1600s, coffee had reached London, adored by businessmen and scientists, coffee had Houses were abundant. They became the best place for news to be understood. But my homie Thomas Jordan said it better than we ever did. Enough and done in all the world, from the monarch to the mouse. But every day or night is hurled into the coffee house. Jordan out. There were centers of innovation and scientific speculation where Newton and his gang discussed their observations. Despite all the hate, it was the hell of juice from Satan that no matter what the season, fueled the age of reason. Thank God for tea. What would the world do without tea? How did it exist? Since the ancient times, tea was cultivated in China, part of their isolated culture until the Portuguese did find them. Introduced into Europe by the Portuguese queen, loved by the British who enjoyed the caffeine. It sharpened workers' minds, helping the rise of industry, kept them far more healthy during this turning point in history. The East India Company was granted a monopoly, and in the East Indies had more power than most countries. In the early 18th century, tea became the valued import. Controlling this commodity gave them the power to contort the government's laws for their own gratification, like the Tea Act of 73, which started the American Revolution. The Paul Revere drank rum. The Brits smuggled opium to China to pay for all the tea, resulting in a war that ended Chinese supremacy. In British-controlled India, they began a new tea industry, and Britain would to this day be known as a nation that drank tea. Stronger, 
stronger. Will they all be food for Coca-Cola? Call brighter, brighter, and thinker things. When they Coca-Cola drink, you will always know. My Broseph Joseph Priestley, in 1767, mixed water with fixed air, and sometimes a twist of lemon. Tonic was popular in Europe and America also, where it was mixed with flavored syrups and industrialized, you know. The dirty secret truth behind Pemberton's famous drink is not the happy story Coke wants you to think. He was a maker of patent meds with caffeine and alcohol. Their newspaper ads claimed that these drugs could cure all. He used two exotic plants, coca leaf and bean of cola. He first made it a syrup to be sold and mixed with soda. Soon Bottled with the tonic, produced industrially, not only at soda fountains, became known nationally. In the Second World War, shipped to soldiers around the globe, even loved by the Soviet Konstantinovich Zakov. The Pepsi was sold in Russia, between it and Coke there was a schism. When the Iron Curtain fell, they drank the Coke of capitalism. With the rise of globalization, many a conflict did invoke, but a better symbol of America than our beloved Coke. Or Eagles. We got the history of the world, all in six glasses. Mistress to be unfurled in liquids, not gases. More wine and spirits than coffee, tea, and coke. It's an incredible thing what these drinks can invoke. Be it made from grapes, grains, beans, leaves, or molasses. History of the world can be shown in just these six glasses. Six glasses. A Tom Standage. Yeah, water is back, 10,000 years later Still going strong, now it's lost all the haters And it's lost all its contaminators too Water's here to stay, and it's here for you Grain money, grain money No Grain money, grain money 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 Grow they all? Who grain for money, Coca grain Cola? Money. Call brighter, grain money, brighter. Grain money. Thinkers think when grain they money, Coca grain Cola money. drink. Dream that delight in wit and mirth, and long to hear grain such grain news as grain comes grain from grain all grain parts of the earth. Dutch, Danes, Turks, grain and Jews. I'll send you all a rendezvous where it is smoking new. Go hear it at. The coffee house, it cannot but be true. There's nothing done in all the world, from the mana to the maps. But every day or night tis hurled into the coffee house. Swag. Jeremy 